Good morning, students. This is your Mohan Rao, Joanasi Senior Faculty. Today, I come up with a, a new concept related to our reproductive health chapter. In the previous uh, class, I initiated a new concept in this lesson that is sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections. And as a part of that yesterday's class, I detailly explain the technical definition of these STDs or STIs thereafter the cogitative organisms for these kind of diseases and thereafter the modes of transmission what are all the common initial symptoms of the diseases and that followed by if the initial stages are ignored which kind of here consequences will be get developed in a, a victim person thereafter what are all the prevention methods thereafter what are all here different kind of diagnosis methods that are all available to us in order to diagnose all these varieties of diseases. In today's session, I'd like to give you the detailed information regarding various types of diseases that are all caused by the pathogens. And earlier class I explained that cogitative organisms includes bacteria, virus, protozoa, fungi and even chlamydia such a kind of cogitative organisms causes various types of diseases in this uh, humankind. So we are going to see such a kind of variety of diseases in, in today's session in a detailed way. And here I come up with a new type of uh, teaching methodology in order to make my lecture more effective so that you can understand the things in the easiest way. So it is very clear to you. Now here this is actually the concept. The sexually transmitted diseases, I will recapitulate here are few things that I explained in the earlier session. Coming to the technical definition of this, it includes, I said earlier, already the diseases or infections, which are all get transmitted through sexual intercourse here, or known as a, a sexually transmitted diseases, they have got another name known as venereal diseases or reproductive tract infections. And this we already discussed in the earlier session. And coming to here, the cogitative organisms in the, regarding these uh, diseases includes one is the bacteria. So bacteria is one of the pathogens. It causes various types of diseases in the human kind. And whereas the second type of cogitative organism is the viruses. Viruses are the second group. Whereas the third one it includes chlamydia is another kind of here uh, organism that causes the STDs in us and whereas coming to the next one is the protozoa is one more positive to organism nematode and here ectoparasites and even the fungi also causes variety of diseases in the human kind. Now let us see the kind of diseases that caused by each group of the microorganisms in a detailed way and I will come to here with the bacteria. See, what are all the bacterial diseases that causes in the human kind, which comes under this category that is sexually transmitted diseases. Right. Coming to the bacterial diseases here, it includes one is the syphilis, is one of the important sexually transmitted disease. Whereas the second type of disease it includes, uh, that is a uh, gonorrhea. And coming to the third one is here. And coid disease. So these are all three varieties of diseases that are all caused by bacteria pathogens. Right. In the medical entrance examination, they will ask the questions in such a way that here, which of the following diseases are not caused by a bacteria? So that you will get in the options like syphilis, gonorrhea, and conchoid and one disease name also will be given which is caused by some other pathogens like protozoa, virus or else nematode like that. So you should be in a here position to answer to such a kind of questions too. Right. In the bacterial diseases, the first one it includes syphilis. Now, I would like to give you the detailed information regarding the syphilis. Before I get into the actual part of teaching and explaining the things in detail, I'd like to introduce certain kind of terms to you that come across in this lesson. So being as a biology student, being as a future doctor, you must be familiar with all such a kind of terms. So these terms it includes, one thing is infection, 
infection is one term. Then, what does this infection mean? Infection here means entry of disease causing pathogen into the organism body. If pathogen get entered into the host or the human body, then such a kind of engulfing process is known as infection. Right. This is the one important thing. Once the infection it occurs, immediately the person will not get a disease. And here he will take some here time for appearance of the disease. And the time here includes here incubation period. Incubation period. Then what does that mean? The, the day at which the pathogen is engulfed into the host body, from that time, the manifestation of the disease or appearance of the symptoms of a particular disease. In between these two steps, how much time does it take? The total time period is known as incubation period. Interesting point related to the incubation period is, this incubation period is highly specific to variety of diseases. Every disease has got its own time period. Then what happens actually during this incubation period? And here the pathogen that enter into the organism body, it takes some time for its multiplication. Whereas the second thing, it has to reach the target tissue or organ, which it is going to be get infected. So for these two things, generally it requires certain time period. The time period is known as incubation period. As I said, thereafter, then the host. Host is nothing but the organism which is going to be get affected by the pathogen or in which the pathogen it gets its lodging and holding and that organism is termed as the host. Whereas the host cell is also there. And the pathogen generally it lives in the cell of a organism or in a particular cell of a host. And the particular cell of the host is known as the host cell. Is one thing. Right. Soon after it is successfully get engulfed into the host, then it causes the disease. And appearance of the symptoms or appearance of here, the disease is known as manifestation. And this is actually the condition during which actually the person he suffers. And that is known as manifestation. And this is a technical term. In general, manifestation means appearance of the disease or appearance of here the symptoms. Then once the symptoms are then appeared, then generally what you do? You do approach your doctor, doctor will give a treatment to us. And a person should take a treatment which we technically known as therapy or cure. So during this time, they will be given certain kind of drugs and which kills this pathogen and protect us from the certain kind of diseases. So these are all the terms that come across when I am going to teach this lesson. Right. And let us come to our actual part and concentrate on first type of bacterial disease in the human being that comes under sexually transmitted disease or sexually transmitted infections. And this includes different kind of headings. One is the name of the disease we are going to study and thereafter the causative organism. What is the organism that causes, which we call it as the pathogen. And that followed by the transmission method and different kind of pathogens adopt different modes of transmission. And here what is the type of the mode of transmission that is taking place in a certain kind of disease. And thereafter here, what are all the symptoms that are appearing to us and thereafter what is the incubation time period and thereafter here what are all the diagnosis methods are available to us in order to identify a particular type of disease and finally the cure or therapy. Under all these headings we are going to study in detail about all these uh, diseases and coming to the first and foremost one 
is the syphilis, which is a bacterial STD. See, let us see this in here, syphilis part. As I said already, the name of the disease is syphilis. This is a bacterial disease, as you know that. And this syphilis is caused by a causative organism, technically known as a pathogen. And here is an important point. Every disease name and the technical name of a pathogen is also required to us for our medical entrance examination. And here it is, Treponema pellidum is the scientific name of the bacteria that causes this syphilis disease. And you know that the scientific name, it includes the species name and genus name. And here it is, Pellidum is the species name of this uh, bacteria, whereas Treponema is the genus name of the bacteria. Coming to here, the scientific name, it includes Treponema Pellidum is the name of a bacteria which causes the disease that is a syphilis. Right. Thereafter, then, what is the mode of transmission? As you all know that all these diseases we are all studying under the heading of sexually transmitted diseases. So, the sexual coitus will be a common mode of here transmission in all the varieties of diseases that we are all about to study. Apart from that, what are all some other methods also available to us for this transmission? The first and foremost here, method of transmission of this disease, it includes sexual contact is one important thing. And I said already unprotected sex. If a couple take part, then if any one of these two couple here suffering from the infection, then the other partner, mating partner have got chances of getting the infection. And this is one of the important mode of the transmission in this case. And whereas the second one is, this is the disease even which can get transmitted from mother to the children, this is an important point. If a mother is suffering from this syphilis disease and if she gives the birth to the her anyone, even the baby also have got chances of getting this disease. So it can get transferred from mother to the children also. So one more method. Then what is the incubation period? So as I said earlier, soon after the pathogen engulf or enter into the human body, immediately it doesn't cause the manifestation. No symptoms are appear. It takes some time. I said earlier, the reason for taking the symptom, the time also uh, for this. And coming to here, after entry of this bacteria, it takes nearly about here 10 to 9, 90 days span of time. So minimum time it takes 10 days and here maximum time it takes 90 days span of time almost all 3 months so once if the bacteria enter in my body for appearance of the disease I may take near about 10 to here 3 months span of time or 90 days span of time so this is the incubation period of this particular disease then what are all the symptoms that appears so after completion of this manifest here, the incubation time, here the symptoms will be appear in the human body. So this is what we call is manifestation. During the manifestation, what are all the symptoms are experienced by the victim? Let us see now here in detail. And the person suffering from the uh, syphilis here have got the symptoms at a three different stages. Now let us see what are all the symptoms at a different stages in a detail. In the first stage, the symptoms that are all experienced by the victim here, that is an endurated infections is one thing. Endurated infections are one important thing. Thereafter, painless ulcers. And here, painless ulcers or endurated infections, it means here a source or get appeared on a hardened surface. Endurated infections it includes here hardened surface infections or happens and that too they will have an ulcer which doesn't have any pain. A painless ulcers will be. Right. Coming to the second here, the stage, here the victim will experience during the second stage he will experience some more here symptoms. 
And during that time, second stage when a person comes, can train, it get disappears. And this is the technical term used. Here, chantre. Chantre means painless ulcers or technically known as chantre. So chantre will be get disappears in the second stage. Then he will experience some more symptoms. And here it includes skin lesions is one important here symptoms. Skin lesions. Thereafter, the victim will lose the hair. Hair loss you can notice, and thereafter, swollen joints. Swollen joints is one more important here. Symptoms are it's a second stage, and thereafter, the flu-like illness. So these are all the varieties of here the symptoms you will experience. You know here very well about the swollen joints. We not to explain and hair loss, losing of the hair. Thereafter, skin lesions. Lesions it includes a kind of sore or a wound. The wounds that are all get appear on the skin. And thereafter, he will experience the flu like symptoms also. And now and then, we do, we do suffer from the flu diseases. And during this flu disease, we do experience certain kind of symptoms. These symptoms include one is a cough, and thereafter, headache, body pains and thereafter running nose, all these are the symptoms and even the lower fever also we can see. So these are all the symptoms of the flu. So such a kind of flu-like illness also experienced by the victim during the second stage, that is an important. And coming to here, when a person come to the third stage, he will experience some more symptoms. Let us see now what, the, what are all the symptoms. In that case, right in the third stage, so this is actually the severe and here severity of the symptoms will be get increased at the third stage. So this is the third stage, or we call it as tertiary stage also. During this stage, chronic ulcers will appear again. A chronic ulcers will be appear. And where do these ulcers it occurs? The first important thing is here on your pellet. Pellet is nothing but the roof of your mouth is known as your pellet. And these ulcers appear even on nose. And thereafter, they do appear on lower legs. So such a kind of chronic here, ulcers are appeared on the pellet, nose as well as the lower leg. And here, if this is get continued in future, it may lead to paralysis. These are all the dangerous conditions in the person, those who are suffering from the syphilis. So paralysis may occur, and even it leads to here brain damage, and thereafter here blindness also can be noticed. The heart trouble you can see in the victim, and thereafter here aortic impairment. Aortic impairment it includes. So in your heart, then we do have the iota. Systemic iota it is known as. It is the biggest here artery in your here body. This iota loses elasticity and during the systole time the diameter of iota it increases. During diastole time the diameter it decreases because of its elastic nature. When a person is get suffered from the syphilis, this iota here loses elasticity. That's what we call is aortic impairment. These are all the symptoms can be experienced by a, here, the person suffering from syphilis at his tertiary stage or the third stage. In this case, what are all the diagnosis methods are available to us? tests that are all available in order to identify the disease or diagnosis the disease. Let us see the types of disease here diagnosis methods that are available to us. One is here a clinical symptoms. Clinical symptoms naturally helps to us in identification of the disease. 
So I said in the beginning itself, every disease has got its unique characteristic features or symptoms. By studying all the symptoms, we can suspect or we can come to a conclusion that this might be a so and so disease. So such a kind of clinical symptoms that are all present here helps us in the diagnosis of the disease. Thereafter, microscopic examination. Here collecting the pathogen and here studying or observing under the microscope, electronic microscope, gives you the information regarding the type of pathogen. If you can identify the pathogen easily, you can here identify the type of the disease caused by it. Right. So that is known as the micro microscopic examination. And here VT or they are all available. That is venereal disease research laboratories. So there is a certain kind of laboratories which are all helps to us particularly for diagnosing these uh, uh, venereal diseases or sexually transmitted diseases. And apart from all these, here ELISA you have. You are all well aware about this kind of disease. Uh, sorry, test. This is known as ELISA. ELISA it stands for enzyme link immunosorbent assay is a here well known antibody antigen detecting test and this is also help to us in order to hear diagnosis this disease that is a cephalus well what is the treatment for this what is the therapy for this once this disease is identified then how can you give a cure for that if you approach a here a certified medical practitioner definitely he will give a, a, a an exact cure for this by using certain kind of your medicines and most of the cases they do use appropriate antibiotics different types of antibiotics that helps to us in order to cure the disease the antibiotics that suits to treat the disease it includes one is penicillin you are all well aware about this antibiotic penicillin and thereafter the second type of antibiotic that is nothing but tetracycline. So these two types of antibiotics when you use, definitely you can give a 100% cure for this disease, nothing but the syphilis. So this is one of the important uh, bacterial disease, the syphilis and all the detailed information regarding this. Let us switch over to the second type of bacterial disease here in the human body. And the second one, second one, it includes the gonorrhea. Right, the gonorrhea is also comes under the bacterial disease. Since our concept is the bacterial, and here it is, the gonorrhea is a disease caused by the bacteria. And the name of the bacteria that causes this uh, gonorrhea disease in us is Neisseria gonorrhea. The scientific name of this one is Neisseria gonorrhea. Is the bacteria that causes this gonorrhea disease. Right. Coming to here, the mode of transmission. How it is get transmitted from person to person, and it includes, as you all know that one is the sexual contact. The sexual contact here, it helps for transmission of this bacteria from infected person to the healthy one. Thereafter, sharing the common toilets is an important point. So there will be a public toilets in different kind of organizations like in the railway station, bus stands and all. And sharing such a kind of toilets and if the toilet is get used by the infected person without disinfecting the concerned here toilet, if another healthy person is used, then chances of transmission of this pathogen. Thereafter, under clothes, undergarments. See, an infected person, if he use any undergarment, the same thing is it get used by a healthy one. There is a hundred percent chances of transmission of this bacteria. So these are all the three different modes of transmission of the disease gonorrhea in us. Right. Coming to here, the incubation time. Once the pathogen is entered in our body, here for appearance of a disease or the symptom or manifestation, it takes nearly about two to five days span of time. So within the two days or three or four or five days, 
then generally the person may suffer from this one. Symptoms will be acute. Right. This is what the incubation period of this disease, that is a gut area. Right. Once the manifestation is done, is happened, then what are all the symptoms are get experienced by the victim? So bacteria generally it lives in generated tubes. Generated tubes it includes here there we studied the male reproductive system and female reproductive system in a detailed way. There we studied about system of ducts in a male and as well as the female reproductive system. So this is a bacteria generally it lives in the genital tubes in the sense tubes of a reproductive system. And then it produces pus containing discharge within the male and female reproductive system it produces a discharge a fluid like here material it comes out and it consists of pus because of the infection this pus will be get formed and thereafter here a victim will experience the pain here around his genitalia here around the genitalia includes as we are all well aware about the male and female reproductive system there we studied external genitalia of male and external genitalia of the female also so the part of a reproductive system that is externally visible to us is known as the external genitalia majority of the parts of a reproductive system are present inside the body in the pelvic region of abdomen so whatever is here visible to us externally and that part is known as here external genitalia around the here genitalia the victim will experience the pain is one thereafter he will experience the burning sensation also burning sensation during the urination part when he is gone for a urination or urinating then he will experience the burning sensation is one more symptom of this one and apart from that it can exhibit some other symptoms also let us see if they are all and here it may lead to the arthritis arthritis in the sense joint pains and even eye infections also eye infections and who will experience these two kind of symptoms these are not experienced by the victim here is the point to be noted and here the children here is a point the children here of the affected mother if your mother is suffering from the gonorrhea and the children of the mother generally also will be get affected in that case the children will experience the arthritis joint pains whereas eye infections so these are all the symptoms experienced by the children who has taken birth from the affected mother gonorrhea affected mother right coming to here this gonorrhea how do how we can identify this one what are the diagnosis methods tests are available to us in order to identify the or a diagnosis the disease let us see here diagnosis methods in case of gonorrhea first one is clinical symptoms you know that here the symptoms of the disease just now we studied the variety of the symptoms so by studying those symptoms we can come to a conclusion that the person is suffering from a gonorrhea is one of the diagnosis method that is available to us this can done by an experienced doctor and there after here gram staining is one so gram staining is one of the method that is available to us which was developed by hans christian gram a scientist and in this method they do use different kind of strains in order to identify the type of the bacteria generally bacteria can be categorized into gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria and here the gram staining method that helps to us for identification of bacteria whether it belongs to gram positive or gram negative and thereafter here the discharges just now i said here the pus containing discharge will be taken place by studying the discharge 
of the victim you can identify and meanwhile by culturing the discharge culturing the discharge so it consists of the disease causing pathogen when you culture the number of the pathogen can be multiplied by studying the particular pathogen we can identify the type of the pathogen finally we can come to a conclusion that what are the type of diseases caused by this pathogen is one thing then what is the treatment available to that one the disease is successfully diagnosed then we should go for a therapy cure for this so for this generally here as i said in the earlier case antibiotics are used in order to treat the disease and the types of the antibiotics here are available and useful to us in order to treat the gonorrhea bacteria disease one is the penicillin whereas the second type of antibiotic is ampicillin the ampicillin and sorry ampicillin and penicillin are the two types of antibiotics helps to us and when you use these antibiotics continuously till the curing of the disease the person will be free from this venereal disease so it is completely a curable disease so this is the second variety of bacterial disease coming to here the third disease cancroid let us see about the cancroid in a detailed way coming to the third bacterial disease the third bacterial disease it includes cancroid well then the pathogen causes to organism here is hemophilus ducrii hemophilus ducrii is the name of a bacteria that causes this cancroid disease then how does this bacteria can get transferred from person to person or infected person to a healthy one right here it is mode of transmission it includes here through sexual contact through sexual contact naturally this bacteria can get transmitted then once this here bacteria is get transmitted to a healthy one then when the manifestation is happened then what are all the symptoms are experienced by the here the infection so it includes appearance of the ulcers ulcers will be get appear on the affected organ or the part and here and particularly here the external genitalia of a reproductive system here these ulcers can be here present and thereafter a uh, and these ulcers it leads to painful bleeding also so you will experience the pain and meanwhile the bleeding of the blood also here happen to see when these ulcers are occur in your body then thereafter here lymph nodes and will be get swollen and they do here become tender and here swelling of lymph nodes also taking place the human beings have got the lymph nodes at a different locations on his body some of the lymph nodes you can happen to see in our neck neck generally just underneath the lower jaw you can see some of the lymph nodes are present in our neck region and some of the lymph nodes are present in a breast region and under the armpits you can see the lymph nodes whereas in a groin region that means in the pelvic region lymph nodes are present and the pelvic region lymph nodes are present around the external genitalia i said the around the external genitalia lymph nodes are present since the external genitalia is infecting by this bacteria generally it leads to here swelling of the lymph nodes and tenderness of a lymph nodes also tenderness in the sense feeling sensitivity for the smaller pain is known as a tender so these are all the symptoms can be here noticed then when what is the technical method that helps to us to diagnose this disease so diagnosis of the disease let us see now here so it includes clinical symptoms by studying all the symptoms i mentioned under this heading 
So we can come to a conclusion that the type of the disease is conchoid is one thing. Thereafter, staining, I said gram staining method here by making use of the discharge. And the cells present in the discharge can be cultured and with the help of the culture also, you can diagnosis and confirm the test that is conchoid. So this is a, here the diagnosis methods that are all available to us. Once when you get confirmation of this conchoid, then here what is the treatment for that? Let us see the method of treatment and type of drugs that we use to treat the disease. So the treatment for that is generally antibiotics. We do go with their antibiotics. And here the type of the antibiotics that we use in order to treat the disease, the conchoid, it includes Semtriaxone is one antibiotic, whereas the second one is erythromycin is another antibiotic, ciprofloxacin is another antibiotic, thereafter here trimethoprime, trimethoprime is another antibiotic, whereas sulfa methana Mitoxenol. So, sulfa methoxazole is another antibiotic. So, these are all the different types of antibiotics that we use in order to treat this conchoid. So, these are all the bacterial diseases. So, here three important bacterial diseases, and here different type of bacteria and the names and the symptoms, diagnosis methods we happen to see as of now. Now, let us switch over to the the next